So Jesus was speaking out against what the religious leaders were doing. And later on in the same gospel, in Matthew's gospel, he speaks out directly against them and says, this is wrong. This is what he says about these religious leaders, what they were doing. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders. I guess just as Heather did with Jairus. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. That's what Jesus had observed with these religious leaders, those in authority, and he was saying, this is not helpful. This is wrong. It's not necessary if you want to really follow Jesus. And I wonder how many of us can sometimes feel these types of burdens due to the demands and expectations put on us by others or even the expectations that we have of ourselves. Maybe someone says something to you about your behavior and you feel that you are messing up and need to change, but find that a heavy burden. Now, it is important that we listen to others, as David was sharing earlier, and we'll come back to that later. Maybe we've developed traditions over many years. We're caught up in them. Or we've become part of the traditions that others have devised. And we're finding they're becoming increasingly constricting and confining. Jesus recognizes this as he speaks of people being weary and burdened. Is that how you are feeling this morning? Because if so, the words of Jesus can bring life and healing and release and freedom. Jesus is going to go on to speak about people taking his yoke on their shoulders. And as Heather was saying, the, the point that he's making is they, alre- they are already carrying a yoke. But that that yoke is weighed down by burdens that he does not want them to carry and encourages them to lay it down, to be free from it and to experience a new way of living. Imagine that when you came here this morning, you would walk through crew with this, with this makeshift yoke on your shoulders and there was a 20 kilogram weight in each bucket. Now, you might have had some strange looks. But by the time you got here, you would probably have been very, very tired. And the burden might even have prevented you from getting here. It was just too much to carry. But then, as you stagger up to the door, imagine the welcoming team telling you it was not necessary to carry that burden any longer. And they'd encourage you to put it down and leave it outside. Think about how freeing and releasing that would have been. And this is effectively what Jesus is encouraging people to do. To lay down burdens that have been wrongly placed on their shoulders and to be free. But sometimes these things that we carry have become so much part of who we are that it is important, so important to be teachable, to ready to listen to Jesus and to take what he says as important, and to be prepared to put other things down. But Jesus does not stop there in saying, put down that burden you are carrying. He does ask people to pick up another burden and to carry it, to carry it for him. And this is the other side of the story. Jesus does offer us freedom from burdens that we should not be carrying, but he expects us to be prepared to pick up and carry the burdens that he wants us to. Authentic life as a follower of Jesus is not about sitting back and taking things easy, but about being involved in the work that Jesus is doing, about working to see God's kingdom come on earth. It's a burden being given to us by someone who is gentle and humble, somebody who offers us a light burden that is easy to carry, And as we do carry it, Jesus promises us rest and a deep sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. As I mentioned, before I came into into doing this role that I'm doing now, I I spent a long time in, in IT. Before Jesus started his ministry of preaching and teaching and healing, he had been a carpenter, a builder. It is very likely that he would have made a number of these yokes for people, 
to carry burdens with. And I can imagine him making them as smooth as possible so that it was as easy as could be for people to use. And he's offering this to people here in a very different context. And he's saying that the burdens he wants us to carry are reasonable, are easy, and will bring fulfillment in our lives. But it does require us to be available to Jesus, to be prepared and willing to pick up and carry the things that he asks us to do. It might be doing something to help others in the church family. It might be contributing to the life of the church in some way. It might be finding new ways to speak with friends and neighbours about Jesus. It might be a totally new direction for your life. And so it's important to hear what Jesus is saying, to hear what he is asking of us, and then be prepared and willing to say that, yes, we are ready and available to do whatever he asks of us. And it's important to be willing to examine ourselves to see whether we have been obedient to what Jesus is asking of us. Maybe taking time with God to remind ourselves what we have felt Jesus saying to us. To ask ourselves the hard question as to whether we have been obedient to his call. Just as Nathan was obedient to the call of God to go and speak to David in what must have been a very challenging situation. Jesus is effectively offering an exchange to lay down heavy, unrealistic, and unhelpful burdens and instead to pick up what he's asking of us and to enjoy the privilege of being part of what Jesus is doing, confident that the one who is asking these things of us loves us, is gentle. He wants the best for us. It's an amazing story that Jesus tells, a story that offers life and hope and purpose and fulfillment as we choose to walk with him along the path that he has already trod. But there's another example of people being teachable, available, and accountable in Acts chapter 13. It's a passage I asked you to uh, think about earlier in the week, and it adds in another important dimension. So we're just going to think about this briefly. Acts 13, 2 and 3 says this. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they'd fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. <coughs> Imagine the scene for a moment. This is a group of church leaders in a growing young church in a place called Antioch. They were meeting together to worship and to fast to pray, to listen to God. It was in the early days of the movement of those who were committed to following Jesus, and, and these leaders had taken time away from public engagement to spend time with God, to focus on him, to listen to what he was calling them to do next. There's a sense here of a group of people who are making themselves available to God, who are willing to do whatever he asks. And they listen to what the Spirit says. And they are obedient to what he asks of them. He said, separate these two men. I've got a new job for them to do. Send them off. And that could have raised all sorts of questions in their minds. As, because Barnabas and Saul were key leaders in the life of this church, this, this growing church. And if, if we looked back in Acts 11, we would find the story of how this church and its relationship with Barnabas and Saul developed. In 1119, we find that uh, believers uh, were persecuted and they fled to many places. They were in Jerusalem, they came under persecution, and they fled to many different places, including Antioch. And we find in verse 20 and 21 that when they arrived in Antioch, they spoke with people about Jesus. Many people believed and started to follow him for themselves. So a church was born, it started to grow. The story goes on that the church in Jerusalem heard about this and sent Barnabas to help them. And he was a great encouragement to them, seeing many people come to faith. Now, Barnabas, realizing the church was growing quickly, realized he needed some help. And he went to a place called Tarsus. He found Saul and brought him back to Antioch, where they worked for a year to teach and encourage the believers. It was an important time, with Barnabas and Saul being at the center 
of what God was doing. And they could have looked forward to many years of growth and really seeing God's blessing in that town. But now the Spirit is saying to the church that they need to send Barnabas and Saul away. That he has a job for them to do somewhere else. It must have been hugely difficult for the church to hear that. They didn't want to lose these two key people. But they were willing to listen to what God was saying. To learn what he wanted of them. To carry the burden that was being asked of them. It might mean that others might need to step up and take on new responsibilities. It might mean things that had been happening would have to stop. It might mean new areas of opportunity developing. They didn't know. All they knew was that the Spirit was saying, you need to send these two guys away. I've got a job for them to do. And they were prepared and willing to do that. Barnabas and Saul, similarly, were prepared to make themselves available to God's agenda. Not to their own. They were probably quite settled where they were. Things were going well. But they were open to what the Spirit was saying to them. And what we see here is the church, along with Barnabas and Saul, were united in obedience to Jesus and seeking to put his call on their lives before their own desires. And sometimes God does this. He speaks into our lives as individuals and churches and calls us to something entirely different than what we've known before. And our initial reaction might be to look at what's been happening, to see it producing great blessing, and to be really concerned about it coming to an end. But if that is how the church in Antioch had responded, if that is how Barnabas and Saul had responded, then the great blessing that Barnabas and Saul were going to be on that missionary journey would not have happened. Are we open to God calling us away from things that have worked wonderfully well in the past? If his plans are for us to be moving into something new. Are we teachable? Are we available? But then what happens at the end of this journey is really important. Barnabas and Saul go off, they travel around a bit, and they come back. We find this in, in chapter 14, verse 26. From Atalia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. And then in verse 27, we see that on arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. So they've been off on their journey, and they come back to the group of people that had sent them, and they tell them what had happened. It would probably have taken a long time to talk about it all. And for Barnabas and Saul, it would have brought up some joyful memories, but also some difficult ones as they relived in their minds the things they'd experienced. Some of the things that happened on that trip. They, they encountered a sorcerer on Cyprus, and they had to deal with him because he was getting in the way of people listening to the message that they were proclaiming. They came to a place called Pisidian Antioch, and many responded to their message. People heard what they were saying, they believed it, they responded, they came to Jesus. But lots of people didn't like what they were saying, and they threw them out of the city. They came to Iconium. Many people came to faith there. Some objected. Some plotted to kill them, which caused them to have to flee the city. They came to a place called Lystra, and Paul was able to heal a lame man so he could walk again. And he also managed to annoy enough people that they took him outside the city and stoned him and left him for dead. But he recovered and got up and carried on. They came to a place called Derby, and many people came to faith there. Lots and lots of experiences that they had gone through. You can read the story in Acts 13 and 14 and see what these men were able to do as they made themselves available 
and, uh, to Jesus and under the authority of the Spirit and went where they were sent and did what they were told to do. Many amazing things happened. Churches were planted. People came to faith. Cities were changed. Lives were changed because of what these guys did under the authority of Jesus. But what happens here at the end of this journey is that Barnabas and Saul are, be, are, account, are being accountable to those who had sent them out. They would have had the opportunity to be open about what had happened. They were talking with people they knew and trusted, people they had a good relationship with. They would have been able to share the successes and rejoice together over them, but also acknowledge the things that had not gone well. The things maybe they thought, well, we could have done that a bit better. Or we, we, we just don't understand why we did this and, and this happened. It was an opportunity to reflect, to see, receive wise counsel and insight from others. Even though they were such powerful ambassadors for Jesus, recognized as leaders in the early movement of those who were following Jesus, they continued in close relationship with others and were prepared to report back to make themselves accountable about what had happened. And this is so important for each one of us. To have those around us to whom we are accountable. People we know. People we trust. People whom we know love us. People who, who we can be open with. People who know what we are doing for God and to whom we have given the right to catch up with us and to see how we are doing. It can happen in small groups. It can happen in friendship groups. But it needs to be something that is intentional, where we have this mutual desire to be accountable to each other. It's something Heather and Isabel and I are, uh, are doing as we meet as leaders, and it's a really helpful thing to be able to do and to share about what's going on and the things that are working and the things that are not and to have that relationship of accountability this is this is not something that is imposed on us in a controlling way but something we freely give to others we say to others can I be accountable to you so that they can help us grow in the way we follow Jesus and live as missionary disciples. So as well as being teachable, as well as being available, it's important to have those to whom we are accountable. And as we develop in each of these areas, we become more and more ready to respond to what Jesus is calling us to do, to pick up and carry his yoke, to enjoy the, the joy and freedom of following the one who loved us enough to die for us. And I think this raises some questions for us this morning as we think about this story. Are there burdens that Jesus wants me to put down so I can carry what he wants me to? Are there burdens that Jesus wants you to put down that maybe have been burdening you for years? And what you're realizing is actually these are not burdens that Jesus wants you to carry. Another question, what am I learning from Jesus? As I take that time to read his word, as I take that time to pray, as I take that time to just listen to what he wants to say to me, what, what am I learning? And how is that changing my life? How available am I to Jesus? Or is it just that I'm there to do stuff for him when, when it suits me? How available? Some of the songs we were singing earlier, the third song, I think, was... Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. This question asks us whether that was a real thing that we're happy to sign up to. 
And then to whom am I accountable? Who is that person? Who are those people who I know have that deep love for me and that deep willingness to say to me, actually, you didn't get that quite right. Well, that was really good to help us grow and to develop. So there's four questions to think about. Our time is nearly gone, so I'm just going to leave those questions up there and give you a few moments just to, to reflect on them and to see what God is saying to us. In a few moments, Heather's going to come and lead the rest of our service.